Hey, good morning, Drew. How you doing? Good. Fantastic. How are you? Oh, doing great. It's uh, always nice to see you. We got this new uh, featured, you know, blacked out background for you. They, they upgraded this little uh, video cam. They use that at, uh, at online at work now, too. So you can be in your house and not, you know, not necessarily be showing what's what's happening. But I'm glad we're able to get back on and do a video. Yeah, as am I. And uh, it's been a while since we've done one. Um, yeah, prison is in my background. That's not necessarily great for anybody to see. I think they've come up with this technology because people's houses are a mess. And yeah. everybody's Skyping from home, so it's, it's a way to disguise it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't need to see my dirty laundry. But, uh, yeah. you know, every, everybody's uh, house, you know, needs to be put in order. You know, I think that's uh, some of the, the great, uh, you know, fruit that we've harvested talking to each other, that some of these books and ideas – transcend the lives of a convict as well as a colonel you know and uh and, and i love getting together with you this the, the latest book uh the the tools uh written by uh phil stutz and i had what's the other what's the other author's name i think this thing is gonna blow our book out yeah yeah pull, pull it back a little pull it, it back I don't think it has anything to do with it. Oh, it does. Put it in front of your face. There you go. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, what's the other author? Weird, yeah. Oh, Barry Michaels. Yeah, it's a, okay. Uh, Barry Michaels. Phil Stutz and Barry Michaels. Well, everybody watching, this is the book. Yep. Um, Phil Stutz, Barry Michaels, the tools, and he talks about uh, the different tools to make life more effective. You know, when it's more effective, see, life is um, its a kaleidoscope of things that happen to us that are of our making and a lot of not of our making. But either way, you need to learn how to navigate it. And I like the tools that he lays out throughout this book. Some of them I realized I was already using. I just didn't really have a name for it. I didn't have – but I think as we go through this, we'll see that some of this is uh, – the stuff that we've already been using to some degree in our life, and then maybe adding some things in there. But we definitely need a skill set to be effective with life. You know why? You only get one life. You know, we don't have time to uh, make mistakes and live with regrets. We want to minimize regret going forward. So whatever I can add to my life to make me not only more effective for my life, but make me more effective in the lives of those that I love, you know, my, my ears are open. Yeah. So I like this book. Yeah. I, this, this, this might be at the top of my list, you know, of books that I think are going to uh, empower and, and make me and the people around me a little better. Um, you know, my, my son and I uh, just the other day started listening to this book on tape while we were driving. And um, it, it really resonated with him. And it's resonated with me, too. Yeah, the, the five tools they have in there, actually, each one of them made me uh, reflect on how I'm doing in my life and highlighted ways that I can improve. So to me, all of them uh, resonated. So, so it was pretty cool and pretty powerful. You know, I first heard about this book from uh, Brian Johnson. You know, he's a gentleman uh, that's been in charge of Optimize, but now he's, he's relabeled his organization into... Uh, heroic like he has a heroic app uh, but he you know coaches others to be coaches and he said this is the top book he bought it for all of his employees and then he he, he told and he paid them to read it because he wanted to institute those tools into his organization so to me it's it's really good you know that the i know you really like the first one the reversal of desire um you want to you want to jump off on that one to get go get going yeah, sure so tool, tool number one in the book is the reversal of desire and it basically boils down to this the thing you're avoiding hit it head on you know uh fear is almost always linked to an image that you have of something terrible happening in the future the more you fixate on this 
the more paralyzed you become. The reversal of desire uh, counteracts what he goes on to talk about is the maze. And when you're stuck in the maze, you're not really moving forward in life. You're not being effective. And I think all of us have been there to some degree. Could have been in a relationship. Could have been in career. Could have been in recognizing that we need to change some core habits in our life, like trying to get healthy. You know, and sometimes we don't realize that we're kind of backpedaling in life when we need to be on the offensive. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You don't have to do it fast. You don't have to do it hard. But you have to do it. Yeah. You know, one step at a time. And so the reversal of desire uh, is about looking at all these different aspects of your life and saying, where have I been stalled out? Or where am I backpedaling? And where can I start making a step forward? Yep. You know, and for me, it... And in my kind of unique prison environment, this is a unique social setting. You know, and, you're, and we're dealing with different uh, personalities, which, you know, out there in society, you are as well. But there were conversations I needed to have with people just so that I could be more effective in whatever environment I am, whether I was out of work. Uh, in the weight room, wherever I'm at, I'm colliding with people, you know, and there are things you, you're always trying to mitigate disaster in here, you know, something that could turn violent uh, fairly quick. What happens is that if you don't learn how to constructively pursue resolution in areas of your life, that's when you get stuck in a maze. And let me read something to you about the maze. The maze doesn't just damage your relationship to other people. It damages your relationship to life itself. And when I say the maze, I'm talking about when we're stuck in our head. When you're losing sleep. When you're waking up early. You know, when you're re repeating a situation in your mind, but you're really not making any progress on something. The maze doesn't just damage your relationship to other people. It damages your relationship to life itself. When you're in a maze, life passes by you. The counterpunch to being lost in the maze is love. And not simply a feeling, but an outflow, which is an infinite spiritual force that gives itself without restraint. So I'll just kind of summarize this that the reversal of desire is not an excuse to be hyper aggressive or to go on the attack. That's where the misconception can be. I'm not trying to, well, I'm not trying. He's not trying to convince us to just attack everybody so we're not on the defense. No, it's saying that your, your push forward needs to be with love, which involves a myriad of different things of, an awareness of where you're at in life, humility, you know, these kind of things. But, you know, your, your offensive needs to be love. And when you do that, you're not going to get stuck in a maze. And that's the first tool yeah. hey, that uh, hey, Drew, if I, authors talk about. Yeah, if I could jump in on that. I, I, uh, I, I, think, I think that uh, there's actually two tools there that you, that you, you intermingled a little. So the, the – the reversal of desire, I think, is your acknowledgement and uh, to actually do what's right and to do the harder thing instead of procrastinating. And because uh, what happens, you get distracted. Like if it's, ah, I don't really want to do that. Ah, I don't want to write uh, in my journal or I don't want to, you know, you know, send your cousin a, a nice email, you know, reflection. And then you, you find you come up with another distraction and you and you procrastinate and you push it to the side. That's the reversal of desire. So I do that every single weekend because I know that on Monday morning at work, there's a bunch there's a bunch of there's a handful of things that I, that is gonna kick off the day. And if I had good discipline, I would either do them on Friday before I close, you know, stop working on Friday. Or I knock them out like on a Saturday or Sunday morning real quick and just get it done. So many times I let it linger 
and then it eats me up on Sunday evening because I still haven't done it yet. And then I wake up early Monday morning, you know, cut into my sleep, and then I'm jamming on work. And if I could reverse that desire, it would make my life, my it would free me. It's like this discipline makes you free. If I would get it done sooner, then I, then I wouldn't procrastinate and I would get that monkey off my back. What you just started to highlight about the maze is when you get slighted by somebody or a situation and then you get in that little the maze of like rethinking, how am I going to get it back? How am I going to get revenge or how am I going to get leverage? And, and that the next tool, the number two, number two tool is active love. If you have an outflow of love towards other people who might have slighted you or in that situation, that is how you can transcend, you know, getting stuck in the maze. And then you, and then you, can, you can get rid of it. And then you end up connecting with the other people in a higher, you know, ab- you know, above the fray manner. And then you make yourself and, and your existence better. So I think there's two tools there, but they do overlap. You know, they are related. Is that... What do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, there's um, there's a little bit of a crossover effect there. You know, like I said, I relate these tools to the prison environment. Um, so I don't need to get up early Monday morning to crunch because I don't work at Honeywell. Yeah, <laughs> but I have my own unique social setting here where where and I apply these tools to my life. So I understand what you're saying. And uh, yeah, the reversal of desires, you know, you have to tell your time where to go. Yeah. Otherwise you'll ask where it went. And yeah. that, that's a key metric in life right there. Just learning how to exercise that tool. And then the act of love and the act of love is kind of a deep, has deep spiritual connotations that I can't really explain to every listener you know, how to do that. I can tell you how I tap into that, how I find that ability in my own life. Um, but if I go kind of down my book, because time is an element here, um, you know that uh, the ultimate obligation, I don't know if you remember him making that comment right there. And I, I was talking to a class the other day, and I said, hey, guys, what's the ultimate obligation? Uh, and they were kind of throwing out some, you know, some ideas. And I said, the ultimate obligation is you have to make an effort for the rest of your life. And I just let that sink in. You know, right now we were, we're in prison trying to earn our way out. Yes, we have a release date. Yes, you have something called good time that if you have, you know, if you exercise good programming and behavior, you might get out a couple months ahead of time. Some of us are, are looking for a bigger break than that. But whatever it is in life, I want to tell you that the ultimate obligation is that you have to make an effort. That's in our, our friendships, our relationships, our career, ultimate, ultimately our legacy, whatever we leave. is You have to make an effort for the rest of your life. And it's just kind of a sovereign reality that you just have to recognize. Hey, I got to get up. I have to, I have to drive. I have to pursue. And I think that kind of also that first tool, the reversal of desire is something that plays into that. Yeah. That's how you'll be effective. Well, the, you know, uh, Phil and Barry, they highlight these other, these higher forces that are sort of related to, to each of these tools. And the, and the higher force that they emphasize for the reversal of desire is forward motion. And I think you're getting at it because we all have a propensity or a desire to move forward and make ourselves better. And so if you can tap into that force or that, that concept, that helps you then attack those obstacles that you might be procrastinating with. You know, so I think, that, I think that's pretty good. But, the, you know, another tool that you're sort of getting at is the Jeopardy tool. It's like, okay... What am I going to be at, you know, at the end of my life? What is in jeopardy if I don't take a, the, you know, maximize the opportunity that exists right in front of me? And, and what that does is that that force that we all have is our internal willpower. And so if you can, if you can cultivate your willpower and, and realize it and grab a hold of that inherent force that exists in nature. I mean, trees have a willpower to live, right? 
it's amazing what they do. Those root systems, you know, expand and uh, grow inside of the dirt, right? It's dirt and water that make a root, you know, but it grows into this huge tree. There is like a, there is a force inside of nature and there's a force inside of us. And, and if you can harness that and realize that, hey, I have opportunity here to be my best self. If I, if I have a discipline, you need to cultivate that willpower that can really take you on a, on a good life journey. So I, th- I think that's that, that third tool, right? So you got the reversal of desire. That's tapping into your natural desire for forward motion. You got active love. That's where you outflow love to others. And that's how, so you don't get stuck in like, you know, tit for tat with others. And then you got jeopardy, harnessing your willpower to make yourself a better person. And uh, so those that's three of them. And I think that's really where, and, and I think that resonates with what you're talking about in your group, uh, you know, meeting, you know, the what did you say? The the ultimate, uh, the ultimate obligation. Obligation. Yeah, I think that I think that's yeah. great resonation. I like that. I like that Jeopardy tool. You know, event. You said events are temporary. You need to find a permanent source of Jeopardy because there is only one thing you're at risk of losing every moment: your future. And um, you know, we talked about that even for us getting out of prison, recognizing that every situation you walk into, you have to foresee what could go wrong here. And that's not being necessarily a pessimist. That's not being a hypochondriac about life. But if you just think it's a survival mechanism, um, you need to look at a situation and say, what can go wrong? Therefore, that enables me to make a next best right decision for my life. Every social setting I go into every job offer that I accept, I need to look at, okay, what can go wrong so I can focus on what I want to make right. And that's a Jeopardy tool. And it ties into the ultimate obligation because, you know, one thing about doing time, and I'll just say this, and is that time is life. And when you're sentenced to, you know, I don't have... I've been in prison over 23 years right now. I don't have a decade to waste when I get out. Yeah. I don't have a year. I don't have a week to waste. I don't have an hour to waste. And I don't mean that from a capitalistic standpoint that I need to make money, but I need to love now. Yeah. I need to tell the people I love. And, you know, my father just passed away this last week. And I've been sitting reflecting on him saying, Should I call them one more time? I should have just, he didn't answer, but I should have kept calling until he answered. I could have told him I loved him one more time. And I was thinking, you know, maybe my father will be alive for just a couple more years and I'll be able to get out and see him. Wasn't really using that Jeopardy tool. Yeah, yeah, I knew he was old and I knew that he could have went at any time. But sometimes I delete that. And sometimes we need to keep that recognition that, hey, life is fragile. And it's there, and then it's gone. Yeah. And we only have the opportunities that life gives us each moment of each day to either uh, have the effect that we want to have, or we do we live with the regret. And so I think the Jeopardy tool is is really important, and it's something I want to keep alive in my life so that I am being the version of myself that I need to be for those around me. Yeah. No, I, uh, and I think that that then goes to the next, you know, another tool, uh, the tool of the grateful flow. So even though you're, you know, going through this hardship of losing your dad and whatnot, and you could get stuck, you know, in the, oh, I should have called more or whatnot, right? You know, it's still to be able to, you know, recognize all the goodness you you had, you know, with Vincent. And, you know, when I was talking to you yesterday, you know, I, I had good memories of spending time with him as well. You know, back when I was just graduating from high school, we sort of did our, you know, yeah. like a big long day trip. And uh, that, that was pretty cool. And so, you know, being yeah. grateful, you know, for for what existence we do have and the beauty um, and excellence that is around us and what we get to experience. I think that's a good, uh, you know, tool and um Another, another, you know, source of power that you can tap into 
to keep you to keep yeah. you moving forward, right? And uh, we we actually uh, every time we have dinner together as a family and we pray, you know, pray before we eat. We all we go around the table and say, "Hey, what are you grateful for today?" And it's nice to be great yeah. to be grateful. And a lot of times, it's being yeah. grateful for each other and what each other is doing yeah. for for us. And so that's a good reminder and it's a good touchstone to, you know, to you know to acknowledge the the goodness that's occurring. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you touched on higher forces. We got about three minutes left. I came up with a little triune thought for that. Um, at the top of the triangle, I put what things mean, what to think, and what to do. I put gratitude, and then being others-minded. These th- these three things flowing together got me tapped into God and God's power and strength and love in my life. Wait, say that again. So you got the three decisions, you know, what things mean, what yeah. to do, and uh, what to what think. think. And then yeah. gratitude and what? Grat- and others minded. Others minded. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Or, you know, that's also that perception, good. right? I know that uh, Ryan Holiday, you know, beats the drum on perception. Uh, perception yeah. might be a little broader. Hey, but the last tool, the last tool is inner authority. And this is, you know, this here, you know, here I'll, I'll share a little of, uh, you know, my weakness. But I have had times in my career where I've gotten nervous on the stage uh, in front of others. And actually, you know, where I got nervous to, to actually people can see it and how I'm speaking or whatnot, right? And it's still something that I struggle with a little here in Honeywell. And uh, the tool of the inner authority, uh, has, has, I've already started using it to help me in, in my, when I give lectures or I'm talking or briefing on something. And, that, and that's pretty yeah. powerful, right? Because anxiety will sometimes start undermining you. But the tool he gives here um, and talks about how you can, you know, take your, you know, your, the, visual, the visual of your, you know, of what you don't want to be and almost like have that, have that image standing next to you, but then both of you and you, and you focus on uh, true self-expression it empowers you to push through that anxiety. And I got to not drink so much coffee in the morning because I think that contributes it to it as well. Yeah. So, but yeah. uh, that's another tool that I think is pretty powerful. Yeah. Well, look, I love you, man. We're less than a minute left. Um, good conversation, man. I know my energy level is a little low, dealing with a lot this week, but I want to encourage everybody. Uh, you can't see the book, but go get the tools. Look it up. Uh, listen to it online, on audio, whatever you guys do out there. I think that there's value in this for your life. Yep. Hey, it's always good to see you, Drew. And uh, I can't wait to see you uh, face-to-face, maybe here again yeah. soon. Um, yeah, amen. And I know you got a big transition coming up where you might go out to camp. And uh, I wish yeah. you all the best, you know, dealing with your dad passing and, up, and a lot of this uh, change that's coming. And uh, maybe these tools will, will serve you well. And take care, my friend. Love you, bro. Love all you right. too. Bye. Bye.